coming right there. Hi, I'm Pete, owner of Allen's Arsenal, here to talk to you for tactical riflemen about red dots, or in this case, miniaturized red dots. Red dots have really come around the last five, ten years, been more popular, big part of it, social media, advertising, marketing, all that. Uh, but really, uh, red dots have been around since the late 80s and early 90s through competition, and even special forces, when they went ahead and they did the Sante raid in Vietnam, they used a very crude form of a red dot sight. A uh, red dot sight is really nothing more than an optical aid. Just because you use a red dot does not mean you are going to instantaneously hit your target. You're going to be a, become a magical pistol arrow person. So we're going to go ahead and talk about fundamentals, mounting them, things like that as we go ahead and continue on with this. So with fundamentals, let's first talk about using iron sights. Guys like me, Carl Z, we all went through our shooting courses back in the early, mid, late 90s, whatever, 2000s. We got beat in our head, stance and grip. Those two things are exactly the same. Nothing changes from going to iron sights to red dots. And then you get into sight alignment and sight picture. Those those are really the big hard ones. Side alignment is nothing more than when you ID your target, you're going to go ahead and pick up your gun, ID your front sight. As you present the gun towards the target, go ahead and line it up with the rear sight. Really what you're doing is you're taking it front sight, getting even across the top, having it centered between the two, and then putting it on the center of the target. That's for sight picture. This right here shows front sight even across the top, centered between the two. Notice you're crisp clear on the front sight. The rear sight is blurry. And then once you put it on your target for sight picture, again, crisp clear front sight, blurry rear sight, blurry target. The problem with this is you start getting tunnel vision on your front sight. And as stress happens, because even though your eye can, over, can process, change focus within hundreds of milliseconds from your target to your front sight to your rear sight and all around, you truly want to have your focus on your front sight throughout the entire time. So when you go to use a red dot, you're truly swapping sight alignment sight picture to sight picture and then sight alignment. When you ID your target, you go to withdraw your gun, you keep your focus on your target, bring your gun, with the dot on and you put it in front. You are literally bringing that dot and putting it in front of your target so that way it looks something like this. Notice the target is crisp and clear. You are watching and paying attention to what's going on. Your dot is right there and then of course the outer part and all that's a little bit blurry. But you can follow it around as you go. With having the dot on the target, no one is going to be able to perfectly hold the dot perfectly centered. I'm using a laser here to emphasize my point, but when you have your dot through your red, through your red dot optic on the target, it's gonna move around, okay? It's gonna move. No one can hold it perfectly still, and even here's me using two hands. What I'm getting at is as you're doing it, trust your wobble. Let it go ahead and move around on the target, because even you notice as I'm holding it here, 50% of the time, we're still on the center of the chest right there, the center of the sternum. Go ahead and pull the trigger, go through the rest of your fundamentals. We'll talk about your different dot sizes, MOAs. All your red dots, they come in different MOAs. They go anywhere from one MOA, two, three, six. There's even some that go into 12 and 13 uh, MOA size. Realize that an MOA minute of angle is that a one MOA dot is equal to one inch at, a, at 100 yards. So if you're looking at a football field sideways, that dot is now taking up one inch of it. And then if it's six, it's taking up six inches. Realize that six inches is about this size. Put it on the center of your body, it's about six inches. Realize as you come closer, yes, it's gonna be larger in size. With that being said, the smaller the dot, the harder it's gonna be for you to realize where it's at when you go to bring it up, present it. But the larger the dot, the larger the dot is in the window, the easier it is for you to pick it up as you go to present it. What I'm getting at is if you have a larger dot, you can cover your target to where a smaller dot, you'll get better accuracy. For new shooters, it is recommended that they start out with a larger dot somewhere around six, seven, eight, and then as they get better with it, go ahead and move on down to a smaller dot because they're more used to having finding that dot 
uh, while they go to present the gun. Also, another thing that's going to affect here is your vision, whether it be you wear glasses, you're getting older, whatever the case may be. Also, while we're talking about this, we'll also talk about brightness. Just like with your rifle red dots, whether it be EOTech, Aimpoint, all that, you can adjust the brightness up and down. So if you're on a bright sunny day, sort of like it is right now, you'll probably want to have your red dot turned up very bright. If I was to go in a house, that brightness is going to overtake everything, so I want to turn it down. Also, with that being said, you only want it as bright to where you can see it. If you have it at max brightness all the time, again, it's going to be blurry and it's going to overtake everything. So just go ahead and have it to where it's just bright enough to where you can see it. I don't care who you are, top pro shooter, operator, whatever. Every one of us at one point has fallen down, whether it be in a match, during training, on target, and we've either gotten mud on it, we've cracked the lens, or whatever. We're gonna talk about that here in just a second. So, if you go ahead and you go to withdraw your, holster, your gun out of holster and you realize that you have mud all over the front of it, or you hit it hard enough to where it's cracked, you still have a red dot that you can see what will happen is as you go to hold it, and myself being right eye dominant, you'll go to look at it through your right eye. You'll still see a dot, but you won't be able to see through the lens. It's obscured. So what you do there is you go ahead, as you should with all shooting, keep your non-dominant eye open. Inside the, your brain housing group, it will go ahead and it will cross both pictures. Your non-dominant eye will go ahead and, and pick up the target to where your dominant eye will pick up the dot in there and then it will cross the two and it will cross the two so you get a sight, sight picture, sight alignment, something like that. Now, if you end up having an even more catastrophic failure where the lens pops out, you get mud on the front of it, or even worse, the battery break or um, the battery dies, what you can do if you have a gun with rear sights, you can go ahead and line up your rear sights towards your target. Simply line it up with the very top center and then roughly use that as a point of reference for your target. Now realize your sight is X amount higher above the barrel. So if you go to use that method and you hold here, the bullet will hit lower. Essentially you're doing a hold off just like you would with a rifle that you zeroed at 50 meters and you're now shooting it at 5 or 10. It's not the best technique but it is a technique that will get you somewhat accurate rounds on target. So another thing we can talk about is having a red dot sight along with having a front and rear iron sights so that way you can co-witness sort of like on this FN right here. Notice with the RMR, it does sit high enough, it does co-witness, and what you'll want to do is have the red dot to where it's just above the front sight post, or if you happen to have a gun that doesn't sit high enough, you can sort of make a reference to where it's at. Another technique or another item out there is this is a set of suppressor sights sold by k &S. They simply flip up. Currently right now they're only making them for Glock. If your battery dies, you can go ahead and go right to that. From here, we'll talk about mounting uh, your red sight to your gun. There's different plates and batteries right now. Uh, there is no picture perfect uh, item out there. It's sort of like the fight between laser, disc, VHS, and beta. Uh, and for you millennials out there, uh, it's more like key mod versus M-Lock because you probably don't understand my reference. Anyways, so no one's making a perfect one sight fits every gun. There are a few different companies out there, Glock, uh, Smith & Wesson, that are, and I'm just using them for example, who are making different plates, different adapter plates to go from a doctor sight to an RMR to an aim point, things like that. But there are some companies out there to where like the earlier generations of the SIG 320s, they were only allowed, or they, you can only use them with the Romeo site. Now they're going ahead and they're changing them from Romeo site, I believe to a doctor site or a Leopold Delta site as well. But until it gets essentially a fix for where everyone will be on the same standardization, there's still different adapter plates. Really the best thing to do 
Now, if you have a gun that isn't already set up to be able to put a red dot on, you can go ahead and have yours sent off to where they can mill it, or you can buy another slide, sort of like this one here from Grey Ghost. Me, personally, I like it to where if it will go directly to the slide itself. Anything you put in between, sort of like the Smith & Wesson, you have one of the little adapter plates. Anything you put in between there, as you start using the firearm, just gives it for something else to loosen the sight. From there, to loosen the sight is going to do exactly what? It's going to go ahead and throw off your zero of the gun. Also, when you go ahead and put these in, you'll want to use uh, blue Loctite, usually recommended, and of course, by anybody, they'll have a recommended torque pound, torque poundage. Also, another thing to think about when you look at different sites is how does the battery go in? Notice the top of this one. You have to actually go in the bottom. Shield made it a little easier. You have a little door on the side you can pull out. While it's still mounted to the slide, you can just pull it out. That way, once you have it zero to the slide, you don't have to change it. Vortex, you can go ahead and pull it out. Leopold Delta Point, you can pull them out. Uh, your RMRs, nothing wrong with them. Uh, you'll have to actually have to go ahead and remove them all together and then put them on. There's also other different type of mounting plates where you can go ahead and take it like this, put it on a rail system, whatever the case may be. Other different options out there for your optics. This is a little uh, protective shield to go around the optic. Things to take in consideration. If the glass is smooth up in the front, that way anytime something goes to hit it, like your hand, you could end up dirtying the lens. Also, another issue with red dots is your holster, how you're gonna carry it, whether you're carrying it in a tactical configuration. This, so far, for this one, this is for a Glock, is a really good source. Notice how it totally protects it keeps it well. The only way you can get anything in it is if sand or dirt or something was to come in the backside. However, not all the companies out there who make holsters are making them for all the red dots that are currently out there, but there are other ones to where they got to cut away for it to work. And even if you're doing it for personal carry, yes, there is no red dot on it, but even if you're doing it for personal carry, it has a piece to where, and it's cut away to where if you wanted to put a red dot optic, you could. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in uh, comments below. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.